everyone and welcome to your neighborhood Unitarian Universalist congregation on Zoom. My name is Suzanne, I'm the music director and I have your announcements. Ongoing at Neighborhood, Monday nights we have spirit choir rehearsal from 7 to 8.30 p.m. You can contact me at music at nuuc.ca if you would like to be a part of the choir. On Wednesday evenings, every week, we have a weekly meditation on Zoom from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. for beginners and intermediates. That's led by Reverend Wayne and Jillian. All are welcome. Neighborhood continues support to support the Sandwich Sisters. Can you help provide sandwiches for hungry people in our neighborhood? This is supported by our C committee. You can contact me for more information if you're able to help. Sunday mornings, our child caregiver program happens here in our Zoom space from 9 to 9.30 a.m. with Zach Getchell. Uh, children and their caregivers are welcome. And today we're hosting the Neighborhood Dance Party Collective from 4.30 to 5.30 in this Zoom service space. Coming to Neighborhood this afternoon at 2 p.m. on Zoom, understanding the over-representation of Indigenous people in the Canadian prison system. All are welcome to attend. This is offered by Jonathan Rudin of the DJC. The Knucklehead Magazine of the Arts. Our issue one is out. You can download it and read it or read it online and the email will be uh, provided in our weekly announcement email. The deadline for the next issue is January 24th at midnight. Send your edited content to The Nuclehead, unless it's a sound file or a movie, in which case send the URL. And we'll have group meetings. The reactions to issue one will be hosted here in our regular Zoom space at eight o'clock on Thursday. A creative shared working session will be in the same place, same time on February 4th. We will continue to have these meetings every two weeks, all starting at 8 p.m. and running about an hour and a half. Everyone is welcome. The annual budget approval meeting Next Sunday, January 24th, after our service with Montreal will be happening here in our own Zoom service space. All are welcome. Voting members of Neighborhood are especially encouraged to attend. The Zoom link, proxy form, and meeting materials will follow later this week. Neighborhood Watch Party. Join us on Friday, January 29th for an evening of fellowship and reflection as we watch the movie Coco together. This will be here in our regular Sunday service Zoom link at 6 p.m. on the 29th. After the movie, feel free to stick around for a short discussion on the relevance of the movie and our monthly theme, Here We Grow Again. For more information, you can contact Zach. The Wisdom Path, Money, Spirit, Life, a small group, be happening in three parts, and each part has three sections, 90-minute workshops for 12 workshops in total. The first group, Money and Self, is full, so stay tuned for part two, which will be Money and Society. Singing meditation is starting again in 2021. We will be offering it the last Sunday of every month from 7 to 8.30 p.m. So for January, that will be January 31st. That's co-led by Phyllis and Fred, who you'll hear at our prelude this morning, as well as myself. We sing interfaith chants and songs and share periods of silent meditation and reflection. All are welcome, no previous chant or meditation experiences required. You can write to me at music at nuuc.ca for more information. Next Sunday, we will be guests at the Unitarian Church of Montreal. The theme for their Sunday service is renewal in the natural world. 
message of inspiration will be provided by their minister, Reverend Diane Rollert, with music provided by Sandra Hunt and Eleuthera DeConca Lippert. Welcome to our Neighborhood Universalist, Univer Unitarian Universalist congregation on Zoom. Uh, we welcome you all as we stay emotionally and spiritually close in this time in which we need to stay physically apart. My name is Dave Renzetti and I'll be your virtual service leader today. Our music director is Suzanne Mazars and our minister is the Reverend Wayne Walder. Zach Getchell will share time for all ages from his home. We also have Gordon Thorne and Lyndon who are doing the Zoom hosting and the cut and paste respectively. Um, a thank you to all of them. Some Zoom etiquette. Uh, just remember to please stay muted unless of course you are speaking, for example, during joys and concerns, then unmute yourself and mute yourself right afterwards, please. Um, please keep your chat open. Uh, that's where we, that's where you'll see uh, the quotes and the words for songs, but please don't send chat messages to everyone any more than you would talk out in the middle of service. This service is being recorded uh, for, for the public and uh, will be released on YouTube. Uh, joys and concerns or similar personal moments will be edited out. Uh, if you have privacy concerns, you can turn off your camera and uh, you can rename yourself. Sacred space and cyberspace are strange bedfellows and we need your help to make them work. Uh, so now we have nowhere else to go and nothing else to do. Please turn off all your devices. This is our threshold moment. Let us enter sacred space together. Let us come together that we might heal one another today. Our service begins now. As we light our chalice, I encourage you to light your own personal chalice if you have one, or you can hold your hands in the shape of a chalice. I asked Suzanne to light our chalice and lead us in our chalice lighting song. We light this chalice to remember And now I would like to ask Wayne to introduce our prelude. Hi everyone. Today there won't be a sermon. Instead, what I'll do is I'll interview Phyllis and Fred uh, and Suzanne about how they see music as a spiritual practice. I think that that's important because a spiritual practice these days, you know, sometimes is easier for folks to do than sitting quietly in meditation or doing something religious or spiritual that they're uncomfortable with. Asho says that music is the easiest method of meditation. Whoever can let himself dissolve or herself dissolve into music has no need to seek anything else to dissolve into. I think we need this kind of spiritual grounding because these days we all know there is destructive climate change and we know how it can hurt us and our ability to live on this planet. And we all know that there's inequity. Some people have more and others have less, not only in our community, but across the world. And this creates political division and identity politics and poverty of body, mind, and spirit. And we all know that there are health concerns. We're in a pandemic now. And in this century, there may be others and certainly there will be for us as we all age. Spiritual practice allows us to ground, to heal, and we'll have a healing service later in this service, and also to in some way sustain ourselves so we can work toward some kind of resolution for all of these things. And spiritual practice does this 
by helping us remember that we are one. There is a common good. We can all survive and potentially thrive. We can work together. We are one people. These are the most foundational thoughts of spiritual practices. And music is one of those practices. It can be used to work against these plagues because it reminds us that we are different, yet alike. It helps us heal as the healing ritual today, and that will help us sustain the caring for our world that we try to do. Hey, Phyllis, hey, Fred. <laughs> Let me ask you, why do you guys sing? It feels good. <laughs> I, I have always sang in choirs, and, and it's because it feels good. That's kind of the, you know, it's engaging the body and the vibration that happens in your chest when you sing, you know, it, uh, it, and it connects with others. So it's uh, very uplifting. What happens when you sing with others? When I sing, and my most recent experiences of that are with our spirit choir here. Uh, and I, I have to appreciate the name of the choir, spirit choir, because it really feels like there's a spirit that we're sharing when we sing, uh, especially when we're finally in the service on Sunday morning and doing our song or when we're out on the street doing the caroling or whenever it is that we're all sharing our voices together. Uh, it, I feel a connection with everyone. It, it's very uplifting. It's very uh, clarifying in some ways. It's a way of expressing emotion even. You know, we've had some services that are, are uh, very playful and the, and the singing is very playful and then there's more, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great boat to be in. <laughs> On an esoteric level, you know, when we sing together and when we're harmonizing, we are harmonizing ourselves with others. So it, it brings us into an attunement. Um, yeah. And what makes chant different? Why chant? Well, chanting is, uh, takes that energy that we create and it focuses us in a, in a direction. Like if we, uh, you know, do a chant that they've been doing at the um, Mother Krishnabai's temple for at least a hundred years constantly, we kind of tune in. I was talking about harmonizing with the choir, but when we do a chant that others have done forever, we tune in with that and we connect with that energy. You know, Fred, and you know probably this, in the Sikh Golden Temple, they chant 24 hours a day, and they've been doing that for 400 years. Um, Phyllis, why do you chant? Why do I chant? Uh, I chant because it feels good. No, <laughs> it's true, though. Um, I, I, like, like, uh, like Fred said, the focus um, using a specific mantra or um, or or phrase from uh, spiritual tradition, it uh, it's it's a an experience of of um, tuning into that um, vibration, I guess, for lack of a better word, and uh, and also in in the Buddhist practice that I do, my teacher and the lamas tell us that when we are chanting these phrases. Um, that energy is being embodied within us. And I feel that it feels different. It's not the same as, um, I mean, it's a lot of fun to sing songs with people and I would never uh, put that down, but this is a focused spiritual practice for me doing these chants and the movements that I do with them. So that's you, had a, you had a funny, go ahead. I find that uh, each chant has its own specific kind of ecstasy that can be achieved from that chant mm -hmm. and it's different depending on the tradition you know hindu chants take you to a different place than muslim chants do or or buddhist chants and uh, anyway I, I experience them as different kinds of ecstasy 
Oh, wow. Phyllis, you had, just to, to end our thing, you had a fun story about being in a lunchroom when you were a teenager. Right. Oh, Tell yeah. us. Teenagers chanting together. No, this was uh, our lunchroom in our high school, didn't have a cafeteria. It was just a room. We all brought our bagged lunch and sometimes they would, they, we would play music and this one day they put on that trooper song, Raise a Little Hell and the whole, everyone, 100 kids all in that room were all up singing together. And, uh, and I mean, aside from the fact that of course the powers that be got a little upset that we threw trash all over the room. <laughs> We, there was this other feeling in, in our classes for the rest of the afternoon. We, there was a joining together. It was very celebratory and rebel, rebellious, you know, raise a little hell. And I, you, some of you must know these words, you're at least as old as me. <laughs> but um, it, it, uh, it really was probably my first experience of um, that kind of group uh, energy. And luckily we were contained in a building. We didn't go out and take it anywhere else but uh it was a lot of fun and i i always remember that especially when i hear that song when i hear it on the flashback 70s or whatever so <laughs> so would you would you take us uh, take us on a on a, an expedition to this chant you know like um and we'll do it for a while because it's a spiritual practice it's not entertainment so um We're going to do a Muslim-inspired uh, chant. Uh, it's a Bismillah. Bismillah Erachman Erachim. Uh, this is the first phrase of the Quran. And uh, Bismillah means uh, we begin in the name of the one. We begin in the name of the divine. You know, Bismillah, Allah, Bismillah. You know, it's like we begin in the name of God. Uh, in, if you're Muslim. Bismillah. Erachman Erahim. Uh, invoking mercy and compassion. So I like to think of it as, you know, when I say Bismillah, it's, it, I'm setting myself up to take the first step in the right direction with the right attitude. Bismillah. Erachman Erahim. Now, uh, when we talked about singing, we, you know, singing with a choir is kind of step one. Uh, singing with a chant, so you have an intention, is step two. And singing a chant with movement is like step three, because the movement helps uh, embody the, uh, the chant. You know, you, you know, when you sit in meditation or you sit and just chant, you, you're all floating away and you're getting all nice and high. Well, but when, you're in, when you <clears throat> use your body as well, it embodies this and, and keeps you, uh, uh, keeps that energy in your being. It's a little more uh, dynamic. Uh, so we're gonna, so you have a chance this morning to do this um, in two ways. You can sit in a chair or you can stand like I'm gonna do. And maybe I'll do that right now. <clears throat> so if you were a Nakshubandi Sufi, you'd be standing in a circle and you'd be holding on to the hand of the person on either side of you. And, uh, and, you'd, and then you'd all as a group, you'd bend one way and back to the center and bend to the right. And, you know, that's how you do it. So I'm going to do that. And Phyllis is going to do the same thing, but in a seated position. And uh, the important thing to notice is that uh, you're leading with your heart. You're not throwing your head around. You're, you're kind of bowing in one way and then bowing the other. We always start by going to the left first. So I'll do one repetition and, uh, and, uh, and, then, uh, we'll, and then we'll stop and make sure we're doing it all right. And then we'll go again. So you lean to the right and it looks like this. Bismillah to the center. Erachman Erahim. Bismillah Erachman Erahim. And it just goes on like that. 
and <clears throat> uh, and Phyllis is going to be bowing the same as me. So you bow to the left, come back to the center, bow to the right, back to the center. Okay, so uh, pick it up as you can, and uh, away we go. <clears throat> Bismillah, Erachman, Erachim. Bismillah, Erachman, Erachim. Bismillah, Erachman, Erachim. Bismillah, Erachman, Erachim. Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah, Erachman, Erahim, Bismillah. 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 
has changed since the chant or, or if you feel any different. Bismillah, Erachman, Erachim. Amen. Thank you for that. Good morning and welcome everyone. Today, most of us are in our homes in isolation uh, let us remember that the homes we are in are on the lands, the traditional lands of the Wendat and the Anishinaabe, the Mississauga, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe Chippewa nations. Indigenous people have been acknowledging the land at the beginning of their gatherings and ceremonies and events for time immemorial. If you are visiting us for the first time, we welcome you. Please stay around after service. And if you don't go to a breakout room, our minister or staff member will be in the main room to answer any questions you might have about who we are. Our mission here at Neighborhood is to empower spiritual growth and shared action for the care of our world. Our monthly theme for January is Here We Grow Again. And today's theme is Spiritual Growth for the Care of Our World, Part 2. In order for the world to be healed, we must be willing to change our minds. We are all well aware of the increasing polarization of beliefs that are going on in the world today. And I would challenge us to critically examine our own beliefs so that we might come closer to other people. In my opinion, the idea that any one belief system has a monopoly on the truth is just absurd. I had the privilege of growing up amongst rabbi. And one of the things that amazed me even more than the extent of the knowledge they had was their willingness to constantly change their mind. In the words of uh, Malcolm Gladwell, He's uh, been a staff writer at The New Yorker since 1996, and he's written five very influential books, probably the most famous of which was The Tipping Point. These are his words. It is your responsibility as a person, as a human being, to constantly be updating your position on as many things as possible. If you do not contradict yourself on a regular basis, then you are not thinking. Traditionally at this time in service, we ask you to turn to your neighbor and greet them. Now briefly unmute your device, switch to gallery view and offer a few greetings to people around you. Thank you, Dave. Good morning. Good morning. Kim. 
Now I invite you to join me in reading our opening words, which will appear on your screen. And if you're on a phone and don't know the words, just listen to me as I read them. Let us cast the circle of a cherished space here, a space of safety, a place of forgiveness, a place of love. If we want the world to change, we must craft in our space and in ourselves the seeds that grow a different kind of life. A life of graciousness, of creative intelligence, a place of life and spirit for ourselves and our families. Now, as we hold this place open to grace and insight, please join Suzanne with our opening song. Suzanne? Good morning, everyone. I'm sitting in our future shared admin office at 310 Danforth. And I'd like to lead you in a zipper song by Leah. We've done it a few times over the past year. It has actions. I'll go over the actions first and describe them to you. The first line is, my hands are strong enough. And I want you to hold up your hands and show your hands. My hands are strong enough with fists, are strong enough they're strong enough. And when we say I'm good enough, we're gonna thump our own chest. I'm good enough. My hands, and you show your hands, are strong enough, show your fists, to give love. Hug yourself and give it out to everyone else. The next line is my arms are long enough. So we show how long our arms are by sticking them out and brushing our hands down them. My arms are long enough, they're long enough. Thump our chests, I'm good enough. My arms are long enough and run your hands down your arm to give love, hug yourself, send it out to everyone. My heart is wide enough. We'll make the shape of our heart with our hands is wide enough and we'll open up that heart to show how big it is. My heart is wide enough. It's wide enough and I'm good enough. Thump our chest. My heart is wide enough to hug ourselves and offer it out, give love. My soul goes deep enough. We're gonna put two fists on top of each other to show how deep our soul is. My soul goes deep, we're gonna bring it deep into our chest. My soul goes deep enough, bring it to the body. Goes deep enough and I'm good enough. We thump our chest, not I'm good enough. My soul goes deep enough, bring it into the chest to give love, hug ourselves, offer it out. The last line is my light is bright enough. We're gonna spread our fingers around our face to show our shining faces. And what a, an amazing picture that makes. If you're not on gallery view, please go to gallery view now so you can see that. My light is bright enough. It's bright enough and I'm good enough, thump our chest. My light is bright enough to hug ourselves, offer it out, to give love. And then we just make our way back through, backwards through those. My light is bright enough. My soul goes deep enough. My heart is wide enough. My arms are long enough. And my hands are strong enough. So I'll do the first verse twice, just so you get a handle on the tune, because it just flows right along pretty quickly. So we go. My hands are strong enough. They're strong enough and I'm good enough. My hands are strong enough to give love. Let's do that one more time. My hands are strong enough. They're strong enough and I'm good enough. My hands are strong enough to give love. And my arms are long enough. They're long enough and I'm good enough. My arms are long enough to give love. And my heart is wide enough. It's wide enough and I'm good enough. My heart is wide enough to give love. And my soul goes deep enough. It goes deep enough and I'm good enough. My soul goes deep enough to give love. And my light is bright enough. It's bright enough and I'm good enough. My light is bright enough to give love. And my soul goes 
deep enough to give love. And my heart is wide enough to give love. And my arms are long enough to give love. And my hands are strong enough to give love. Thank you, everyone. I would now ask Zach for our time for all ages. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We're gonna talk today about a thing called music. It's really, really fun and can teach you a ton about yourself and everything around you. Ah, music. There's nothing quite like it. It's like water in all three of its forms at once, solid, liquid, and gas. Music is something that has solid rules and, and a structure that you can build with. And by using those rules and structures, you can create truly beautiful, unique pieces of music. At the same time, music is something fluid that's constantly changing. No song, when sung multiple times, will ever sound the same. That's why live music is so interesting because even the same song sung hundreds of times by the same person is slightly different every time, like flowing water. And like a gas, music is something that exists outside the realms of physical sight, something we can hear and feel, but not see. Music is something that everyone can recognize almost from the moment they're born. Even those who have spent no time at all learning about music know what it is and know more about it than they probably realize. When I say the word music, every one of you gets an impression in your head. Maybe it's a favorite song. Maybe it's the call of a bird. Maybe it's a really annoying ad jingle that's been stuck in your head for weeks. I couldn't say what it is as it's in your head, not mine. But I am certain that the impression is there, that when I say music, you know what I mean, that you don't need a definition for it. But I'm going to give you one anyway. The Oxford Dictionary defines music as vocal or instrumental sounds, or both, combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. And if you look at it like that, anything can be heard as music, no matter how harsh or grating the sounds, because not every emotion is pleasant, some harmonies are very dissonant, and beauty is in the eye, or in this case ear, of the beholder. So if anything can be music, and we as people can recognize music almost from birth, how do we get good at it? How do we go from a place of being able to recognize music to a place where we can create it or learn from it, like I mentioned at the top? It turns out, like anything else, that learning music comes down to practice. Only because music is made of a collection of sounds and can be so many different things, you can learn it in so many different ways. I have lots of friends who have learned to work with music in very different ways, and I'd like to share some of their stories with you. My friend Steve started really learning music around 18. Although he'd taken some lessons, he found the most helpful things for him were the chord grids that he'd gotten from a top 100 hit songbook. Chord grids are basically a written down sign of where to put your fingers on a guitar to make a chord. Once he'd learned how to play the chords and go from one into another, Steve had what he calls the building blocks of musical life, which can probably be assembled in more ways than Lego. He learned how to strum them, he learned how to pick them, and with them he's written a few songs. One of them is this song. Um, so this is a song that Steve brought to our own Suzanne, who has been studying the rules and structure of music for most of her life. And she was able to arrange his building blocks of sound into this physical form of music, this sheet music. And now anyone who knows the rules of music would be able to play this song by studying this sheet. Pretty cool, huh? I have another friend, Peter, who never studied music. He was in fact told by his music teacher to stand in the back and not sing, which I can't even imagine. It was so disheartening that he never tried to learn more about music. 
He even says that he doesn't know anything about the theory or structure of music. But Peter does understand sound. He studied language and taught English. And with his knowledge on rhyming, rhythm, and meter, Peter has even written a couple of songs sung by our very own spirit choir. And so with no official musical learning, Peter found a more fluid way to be able to connect and learn from and make music. I remember when I was learning to play the wood flute, I was having my lessons with Wayne who was teaching me. And in those lessons, Wayne taught me another way, a way most of you are probably familiar with because it's how Suzanne teaches us new songs and hymns. Wayne taught me to play the flute by hearing and repeating. Isn't that right, Wayne? Yeah, it is, Zach. You know, it was so nice when, when you came and, and wanted to play. You were so excited. And, and, um, and so we, we put the flutes together and I would play some song sounds and then you would repeat them. And then I think you got much, much better. Thank you. You want to try it? Uh, yeah, that sounds great. I happen to have my flute right here. <laughs> and I happen to have mine here too. Here. <laughs> it is great. Thank you, for that with me. Oh, thank you for doing that with me, Wayne, and thank you for teaching me the flute. It was great. Well, everyone, that's just about all the time we have today. So I want you all to remember that music is everywhere. It can be almost any combination of sounds. And even if you know absolutely nothing about music, you can still appreciate it, learn from it, and indeed make it. So go on and make some music. Thank you for listening. Thank you, gentlemen. This is a time in our service, a special time when we share a joy or concern that might be going on in your life. Uh, open your participants window and raise a virtual hand if you have a joy or concern you would like to share. If you're on a phone, uh, without a screen, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. To speak, please remember to unmute yourself. And once you're spoken, once you've spoken, remute yourself. We ask that you please respect the sacredness of this ritual and refrain from making announcements or telling stories. Try to name the emotion or the feeling behind it. This is a cherished time in our community that brings us closer in times that are separating us. I would like to start by expressing gratitude for all the volunteers efforts seen and unseen that help our community come together. And I'd also definitely like to light a candle for the frontline workers and our hospital workers who are doing incredible, incredible work. So I would light a final candle for all the joys and concerns which remain unspoken in our hearts. And I would now ask Wayne to do our meditation. Hi everyone. I think most of us know how to do a meditation to be quiet. <clears throat> And I want to tell you that one of the things that I have done almost from the very start is, is during the meditation, which I also sometimes have trouble with, I use music and movement. Now, music and movement, you might not know what I mean, but find a place to sit quiet so that you feel as though you're safe, so you're relaxed. 
I often close my eyes because it makes me focus on my internal world without losing contact with my outside world. Now, one of the things that I do is I add sound, especially repetitive sound. This sound is unusual. This is 80 monks chanting inside a temple near Bodh Gaya in India. It's the same sound repeated again and again. But so too is our breath repeated again and again. So too is the rhythm of our heart again and again. I'll often rock a little. And when I get caught in my thoughts, I let the music bring me back. The rhythm bring me back. Until I can ride a little bit on that rhythm. Now, every time our mind gets busy and takes us to rehearse the past or predict the future, we can take a breath back to the rhythm of the sound, of our breathing, of our heartbeat, of our rocking, Fred and Phyllis did this wonderful thing during their chant. And when it ended, they didn't stop. They just held a moment. Hold a moment. And then it's over. 
And now we've come to time for our offering. In these times of isolation, let's not forget that this congregation is a living entity. And like all living things, it has, it has requirements to nurture and sustain itself. If you contribute to neighborhood by pre-authorized withdrawals, thank you. Uh, as, we continue, as we contribute to the life of this community, we affirm our lives within it. We can't pass the basket. But for those of you who do make contributions to the basket each week, consider writing a check or making an e-transfer, which is the most cost-effective way to give. Individuals who um, consider even doing a, a reoccurring gift. A link should be in your chat window now. For those of you who need to do this, it's just a click away. You can also go to their donations page on our website. We'll now pause for a moment and Suzanne will play My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Thank you, Suzanne. That was beautiful. Um, I'd like to ask Wayne to introduce our final song. Well, I, I was excited about this service because I get, get to ask Suzanne, Suzanne, how is music a spiritual practice for you? Um, we had a discussion earlier this week and this morning, Wayne, I had a a realization that I think gets more to the core of it for me, which is music allows for the dissolution of ego. And I think that's the core of the spiritual practice, whether it's singing with the choir, where your voice is joined by many others and you lose your individual voice to the sound of the whole, whether it's in the context of um, singing in a demonstration where you're leading a group of people to join in a common, a common cause towards a common good, whether it's improvising and soloing in like a rock and roll context where you're losing your conscious thought and just entering into the flow of the moment, whether it's in chant when you're singing along with others and it's no longer about your individual voice, but how it uh, mixes with the other voices and everyone is elevated by that. For me, that's really the spiritual truth uh, I find in music. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's wonderful. You know, like I've been reading all these quotes. Um, how has music changed you? It's hard to answer that question because I've had music as a regular practice in my life since I was four years old when I started taking lessons and have been in, involved in practicing music since that very young age. So it's hard to know who I would be without it. But the things I can say I've, I've learned from it um, is certainly understanding more deeply humanity uh, through all the different types of music, the different types of sharing, the different sounds, different instruments of the world, different kinds of uh, personal expression, things people share through uh, music. Also the way I connect with others. Um, when I meet other musicians and get to play and share, it's a different type of 
communication and one that I feel fluent and versatile in. So uh, being able to connect with other people through music brings us into a kind of um, understanding and a relationship that is unique and deeply soulful and spiritual and emotional and physical. I, everything in one. <laughs> You had an interesting expression. You said that the quality of your like physical ability allowed you to ride the... Oh, to ride the groove train. Talking about, um, Zach mentioned how you um, get better at music is through practice. And the more you practice, as I'm sure with any art form, even for athletes, the more you practice, the less you have to involve the left brain to really think about what you're doing. So the more um, natural it becomes, the more it becomes a part just of your expression, the easier it is to, as I said, ride the groove chain and jump on the train without having, for me with my fingers, having to worry so much about where to put them because I've practiced. <laughs> I love that expression. I've ridden the groove train sitting quietly in meditation too. And I know that this video is gonna be about harmony. Tell us something about harmony that, in, that you know. Um, yes, in the next video, thanks to the Spirit Choir, we get to experience some harmony on Zoom, which is the one thing, great thing that's been taken away from us uh, during the pandemic is the inability to have spontaneous harmony in our services. Um, singing together in, in harmony creates something much more beautiful and moving than you could ever do alone. So when we talk about bringing all of our different voices and all of our different skills and gifts to create something bigger and something more powerful than we could ever do on our own, that is thanks to harmony. And can you feel it? Oh, yes. <laughs> I feel it uh, definitely physically. You can feel the vibrations in your body, but also uh, emotionally causing joy and pleasure and some kind of deeper satisfaction. Talk about bringing harmony to the world, getting to practice it through singing is the way we can know that it's possible. Show us, you know, show us with the video and, and tell us about it. Great. So I'd like the, the congregation to be able to experience making harmony uh, as part of our closing song today. So we're going to be singing the word Alleluia over and over again. And it's in four parts and you can decide for yourself which part you want to be. In the video, you'll see me at the top bringing each part in one at a time and lining out the notes. So once you've chosen your part, if you can just hold on to it while the other voices join, you will be in harmony with the rest of the choir. I'm gonna quickly teach the parts before playing the video, just to give everyone out a, a little bit of confidence going in. Um, it's <clears throat> for the basses, for low voices, we're gonna sing. Basses, why don't you sing that one with me? Alleluia, alleluia. And if you'd like to be a tenor, they come in second. They sing Alleluia, Alleluia. Tenors, let's try that. Alleluia, alleluia. The altos come in third, and their melody sounds like this.
sopranos are just a third above the altos. They sound Alleluia, Alleluia. Let's try that sopranos. So enjoy the video. Thank you to the Spirit Choir for submitting your tracks. Uh, join the part that you feel most comfortable with. Wow, that was beautiful, very harmonious. <laughs> I ask Suzanne to extinguish our chalice now as we sing our extinguishing song. Friends, the chalice burnt out during the service, partway through the service. <laughs> we will sing together. <laughs> Although our chalice may We had a tradition here in pre-COVID times of holding each other's hands to end our ceremonies. Today, we can't do that. So instead, let's go to gallery view and unmute yourself. So together, 
let us say the word namaste, which means I salute the spirit within you. Congregation of Neighborhood. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Namaste. 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 For the closing blessing today, we've been asked to try and use our own words or our own thought. And a thought hit me with a bit of a lightning bolt a little while ago as I was examining us moving forward and changing our minds. Do not believe everything you think. Do not believe everything you think. Our service has ended. Thank you. For those of you who do not wish to join a breakout room, thanks for joining us. Everyone else who remains will be assigned to a breakout room. And today's question I came up with was, what am I willing to change my mind about? If you are a newcomer to our congregation, stay in the meeting room by saying later to the request to join a breakout room and our minister or our staff member will be there to talk to you and answer any questions uh, about our faith or becoming a member of the congregations. Breakout rooms will begin shortly. Go in peace, everyone.